Until now, we tried understanding what is backtracking and how to identify backtracking. In this lecture, we will see a blueprint to solve the backtracking problem. In a real problem, initially you'll be given a matrix that may be having zeros or maybe ones or maybe the combination of both. So you'll be given a matrix with all the cells filled up with some initial values. Now there are four elements that we think on to solve almost any backtracking problem. Let's observe these four elements. First is the choices. To build a solution for a problem, at each step, we will be having choices. Because if it is a backtracking problem, we definitely be having more than one choice at each step. Because backtracking is all about going forward with a choice, and if the choice proves to be a wrong choice, then going back and discarding that choice and trying other options until we get to the solution. So when we are going to approach a backtracking problem, we have to think of the core choices that we have at each step, or let's say at each cell. This is like a fundamental element to solve backtracking problems, because at each step, you'll be having same choices, which means there will be same decision space each and every time. So when you will solve the problem at any step, you don't change the decision space. For example, if you're given a matrix, or let's call this matrix a maze, and you have been told that you have to find a path to reach from the top leftmost cell to the bottom rightmost cell. Given that, you can only walk on the cells having value 0. So see this matrix, the path that can be traversed to reach the destination is this one. Right? Telling the answer straight just by seeing this is easy, but how will you do it programmatically? So that the program runs fine, not only for this path, but for any given matrix. The first fundamental element to write the solution is the choices, as I said. So see the first cell. At this cell, we have two choices to move forward. We can either move one step in x direction towards the next column or in y direction downwards, that is towards the next row right below. This decision space is same at each cell. So if you are at the second cell, again there are two options, one of which we can choose. So this is how we identify choices. Now the next element is constraints, using which we validate if the current step is inclusive or safe to update. Now think of the second cell. We said at each cell we have same decision space, right? But at the second cell you cannot make any step forward towards the x direction because the next element there is 1. And we cannot move to a cell which is having value 1. And also think of the third cell in the next row, that is in the second row. If we reach here, we, can make, we cannot make any step forward in x direction because there is no cell after it in the same row. So these are the areas where constraints kick in. There are always some constraints to handle the boundary conditions or to validate the current step. So we always do a constraint check before making any move. So if I talk in terms of this example, see this function is valid. It will return true only if it satisfies these constraints. The row must be greater than or equal to zero and the row must be less than two. And similarly, column and the cell must be having value 0. So if all these constraints are satisfied by the current candidate, then only we include that candidate. And if we are including the candidate, we are setting the value for that candidate as 0. And then we move forward with next moves.
Now to make the next moves, we need our third element, which is recursion. It is safe to include the cell in the solution, then we can go further, right? And how we can go further? Simply by calling the same function again for the next cell, right? So we can call the recursion then. Recursion is always about how we want to move forward to cover next cells, keeping all the choices in mind. So for this example, we already identified that either we go in x direction. For this recursive call to go in x direction, we increment the x by 1 and we keep the y same. x is column, so we increment the column by 1 and we keep the row same. And to go forward in y direction, we call the function recursively by keeping x same but incrementing the y. So we are incrementing the row by 1. Now if going forward in x direction does not work out, then the execution come out of that recursion back to the current stack frame. And it tries for the next option. Next option is to go forward in y direction. So it starts towards y, goes deep into the recursion, creates some path in these directions from there. If reaches the destination, it wins and comes out of the recursion with a solution. Else it comes back failing from the next frame back to the current frame and start again from there with other choice. And if all the choices for current candidate fails, the only option left is to reject the current candidate because the current cell cannot lead us to the solution anyways. So we have to discard or undo our decision or undo the already set value for that cell. This is what we call backtracking. Discarding the current decisions on the basis of future results. I like it to state it this way rather than saying we go back and revert the decision. However, both statements are trying to say the same thing. So here either if the current cell fails on the constraint or going forward with any choice does not work out, in both the cases it marks the current cell 1 to say that this candidate or this choice can't be a part of the solution. Now the last element. The last element is goal. This is the element which tells us when we're going to get the result. Clearly this is the element which get us to the base case or base condition for the function. The base case is when we get to the final solution. For example, here the goal or the last step is to reach to the bottom rightmost cell. When we reach here, we will be having the final solution in our hand, right? So here we should stop. We don't need to make more recursive calls then. So reaching the cell at n minus 1th row and n minus 1th column is a base condition. If it reaches here, we can return true and the maze will be fully updated here with the final path. Let's see the complete solution to the problem we took. This is the complete solution of the problem and here we have the constraints, we have recursive calls in x direction, we have recursive calls in y direction. These recursive calls are associated with choices, we have backtracking step and we have goal. Let me also tell you one secret that algorithms are very natural and I started getting how to solve them when I solved a bunch of these problems. And I'm very, very sure this will happen to you as well. So start solving some problems along with me from next lecture. And then I strongly recommend coming back to this lecture after solving some of the backtracking problems. Then it will start making very much sense to you. So let's stick to these elements and start solving backtracking problems from next lecture on.